Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you how to install our new monitoring solution using the SQL client and not our management utilities MemSQL tools. We recently released some updates to our monitoring solution to simplify it. Specifically, we removed the need for Kafka and the MemSQL pusher process. Additionally, we greatly simplified the setup process and we introduced automation through MemSQL tools. But if you're not yet on MemSQL tools, or you're not using a management utility for the database, you can still enable monitoring through the, through the command line. So I'm going to show you how to do that today in this video. Before we get started, I want to quickly summarize the components of our monitoring solution. We have an exporter that collects data from the cluster, this scrapes information schema tables at an interval, and produces a historical snapshot of your cluster status. And and other metrics. Then you have the database that actually stores the monitoring data. This includes pipelines that actually extract data from the exporter and store it into the database, as well as all the relevant DDL. Finally, you have the Grafana dashboards that surface all the data, which I'll show you as well. Here I am running a small cluster with a master and a leaf and they're both running on the same host, but of course you can have multiple remote hosts as well. Now, in order to enable monitoring without MemSQL tools, you're going to need to log into the database. Great. I'm going to confirm the MemSQL version before we get started. It should be on version 7.1.8. So, to start, I'm going to enable the exporter process. So to do this, you're going to essentially set the global variables that are associated to the exporter, which are exporter user, password, and port. Now this user needs to have access to scrape the information schema tables. So they need to have show metadata and select from information schema. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the root user because I know that that has elevated access. And then you specify the password that you use for your user here. And then the port. By default, that's 9104. Great. So based on these commands, the exporter is running. Now you have a couple options as far as where to set up your monitoring database, which we'll call metrics database and metrics cluster for the purposes of this video. You can either store it locally in the same cluster or you can store it in a remote cluster. I'm going to keep the metrics database living in the same cluster that I'm monitoring. The next step is to configure the monitoring database. So this is going to require creating a database in the cluster and running a number of DDL statements to, to create the objects that will store the monitoring database that the, that the exporter will collect. So we have a, you can find the SQL file in our documentation. I'm going to go ahead and copy it in. So now I'm going to just double check that everything was loaded properly. As you can see, I have a metrics database. I'm going to use metrics show tables, and all the objects that, that we're expecting are created. And again, like I mentioned, if you're using MemSQL tools, all of, these, all of this will be done automatically, but because you're using the SQL client and not tools, you have to run these statements manually. So as you can see, we have all the tables, and the DDL that I just ran also included the, the pipelines information, which is what's used to actually pull the data out from the exporter process and store it in the database. So I'm just going to do a quick check to see if data is being populated. And as you can see, there is data in here. So in a few steps, without MemSQL tools, we've quickly set up the MemSQL monitoring process to collect data. Now we can visualize that data. In our documentation, we have some 
links about how to actually install Grafana. And we link you to the Grafana documentation. So I'm going to follow the Grafana documentation to install Grafana on this same host. The first step is to, which you can look on the Grafana documentation, is to create a file to store some of the configuration for Grafana. So this I'm actually just copying directly from the Grafana documentation. So I've created a new file, and depending on if you want to use the enterprise version or not, you might copy different things into this file. I'm going to go ahead and copy the enterprise version information from the documentation. And as you can see, this shows information about some repositories and the keys required to access the repositories. So that's the first step for installation. And again, we've linked you in the documentation to all these resources. So depending on your distribution type, you can, you can install Grafana in a few easy steps. Now, the next step is to actually get the packages for Grafana, which I'm going to run sudo yum install Grafana, as I have an, a Red Hat distribution. It's going to ask me for a few pieces of information. Great, it looks like we're all complete. Now, per our documentation, we have a couple plugins that, that you need to download on Grafana in order to properly benefit from our monitoring dashboards. So one of them is the pie chart panel, which requires a restart. And the other is the multi-bar graph panel. Again, all of these steps you can copy directly from our documentation. And this requires a restart as well. Excellent. So we are all set with the installation. Now that we have Grafana installed, we can actually navigate to the dashboards. So in order to connect to Grafana, you need to input the host name of your EC2 instance, followed by port 3000. And all these instructions are listed on our documentation. And then you start out with a basic admin, admin user and password, which will then be then will be requested to change, which I'm going to make it more secure here. And you're ready to go. And again, all of these steps are in our docs as well. Now the first step you must take is to actually add the, your, the data source. MemSQL is compatible with MySQL Y protocol, so this is going to be a MySQL data source. And all you have to do is input your information about the database connection. So localhost 3306, database name is metrics. I'm going to use the same credentials that I use to set up the monitoring database. And I'm just going to make sure the connection is successful. It looks good. The next step is to actually add the dashboards. So I'm going to use the import button here, which is the plus sign. And we're going to import, I'm going to start with active session history, which shows our query information. Great. And as you can see, this shows the current qu queries that are running on the cluster, which databases they are running on, information about the resources that they use, and our summarized activity of the graphs, of summarized activity of network, CPU, and lock time. This is just one of a few dashboards. I'll go ahead and import another one so you can see how simple this is. I'm going to use the import button, upload again, and I have these saved locally, but you can also put them on the machine that you're running them on. Going to upload the details cluster view. Great, so this is the some details on cluster CPU usage, the qu current query rate, memory use, workload management, and cluster events. 
And so as you can see, there are a number of dashboards you can import. I just showed you a couple. And these will be very useful in showing you the current status of a cluster. You can use this to monitor events that happen historically, because everything is time series here. And you can also use this to monitor existing activities. Thank you for watching, and we hope this tool will help you monitor your database.